Chapter 89. Nothing happened. The wind outside rustled, almost silent. Lumion allowed his thoughts to wander in this tranquil state as instinctive questions ran through his mind. There's still light in the corridor. Leia must be awake still, reading Aurora's book collection. Pitch darkness blankets my bedroom. Valentine should be resting in bed. I wonder what Ryan's up to. <laughs> they didn't bring any alcohol on their first visit. They've no clue about Dariage's customs. If the cycle lifts, Grand Soa can turn an informant for Barrow 8. When the time comes, she won't fret over any investigation if she goes to Treyar. As for me, I needn't undergo any special tests as an informant, right? Now we've a full theory of the whole affair. The sole thing we can't be sure of is the owl and the dead warlock in the tomb's role. If they bewitched the Padre and company, causing the abnormality to achieve some goal with the Twelfth Night Ritual, why did they do nothing but monitor my progress exploring the dream ruins? Could it be that, like Madame Poilise, they await a specific time or the ritual on the Twelfth Night, intending to complete the disrupted part? Is that why they want no changes to the loop restarting it ahead of time? Their actions in turn prove the key to the loop lies with me. That's why they repeatedly try to confirm how far I've explored the dream ruins. If I unlock the dream's secret before the twelfth night comes, and master recycling the corruption, will they ignore the possibility of the cycle restarting ahead of time and attack me to hold me in custody? Yes, it's very likely they still have their memories. As all sorts of thoughts raced through his mind, Lumion suddenly heard faint commotion. Bah! It was a sheep's bleat, as if from afar. Lumion instantly thought of the three people turned sheep and shepherd Pierre Barry. Don't tell me he really wants to attack us dead of night. Lumion stood up and listened intently. Outside the window was but the wind sound through leaves and branches. No bleating. It seemed Lumion so engrossed in his thoughts was hallucinating. But he didn't think so because he felt slight heat in his left chest. The black thorn symbol seemed to have appeared again. This meant an invisible force closely tied to the hidden existence had quietly invaded the room. Lumion had no time to think. He rushed to the bed and shook Aurore. Wake up! Wake up! He shouted in a hushed voice. He instinctively worried Leia, Ryan, and Valentine would sense something amiss with him. Aurore opened her eyes, her light blue eyes clearly dazed. What time is it? She asked in a weak voice. Obviously, she was still not fully awake. There's a situation, Lumion said decisively before continuing. Half past nine. They were one of the few families in the village with wall clocks. Aurore's eyes snapped open. She bolted upright, threw out her right hand, and massaged her temples. She had no time to consider what she might see that she shouldn't. If she couldn't pinpoint the anomaly and confirm the problem as soon as possible, she might not have to worry about seeing anything again. The dead had no need for eyes. Aurora scanned the room, her gaze darkening as if reflecting strange, indescribable lights and shadows. Lumion seized the chance to tell his sister about the sheep's bleat he heard in the distance, and the triggered heat in the black thorn symbol on his chest. Aurora frowned, but I didn't detect anything. The burning in my chest remains, Lumion rumbled. He felt inexplicably terrified. The darkness around him was not simple. An indescribable danger lurked. Aurora scrutinized every corner of the room, trying to find the unknown. Silently, Lumion broke into a cold sweat, a stark contrast to the searing heat in his left chest. He deliberated for a moment and said, Why not tell Ryan and the others? Maybe they can find something. Aurora pondered, then nodded. Use your sudden sense of impending danger as an excuse. Right. Lumion opened his mouth, about to yell outside, then froze. What is it? Aurora asked, alarmed. Lumion frowned. The heat in my chest is dimming fast, meaning the blackthorn symbol was fading rapidly. The danger invading our room has left? Aurora mused. Because we prepared, it did nothing? Perhaps, Lumion turned to the corridor and bellowed, something's wrong. Ryan appeared in the doorway in the blink of an eye, followed by Leia, then Valentine, who looked jolted from sleep. 
Without waiting to be asked, Lumin recounted what had happened, using his sense of danger in place of the burning in his chest. Ryan listened intently, not doubting this was Lumin's hallucination. He sighed. It's useful indeed to take turns on night watch. Mostly it's boredom, but if it saves everyone, it's almost life and death. As he spoke, he conjured pure sunrise gleam around him, circling every room on the second floor. Though he couldn't find the sinister power, he could at least sanctify the environment. Leia paced around, muttering under her breath. Her veil and boots jangled ominously, then fell silent just as abruptly. Finally, she said to Aurora and Lumian, It was dicey just now. On top of that, whatever it was could block my sealed artifact from giving me any warning. I'm afraid these stupid bells will only go off once that thing really starts targeting someone. But now, it has left. Well, that's reassuring. Aurora sighed in relief. Maybe it wasn't a single creature. Lumin relaxed and grinned. Could have been more than one. Ryan and the others were silent. That's even worse. Aurora lashed out at Lumin and told the investigators. Now that the alarm is off, let's get back to our schedule. She didn't mention who might have snuck in to attack them. There were too many possibilities. Shepherd Pierre Barry, the unknown corpse in the tomb, or the shady deputy Padre. Without solid clues, speculating would just waste time. Better to wait until daylight. For now, they just had to remember that nighttime held real danger. Someone was out to get them, so they'd need to stay on high alert. Once Leia and the others had gone to their rooms, Lumin glanced at the wall clock and asked Aurora, Want to sleep in a bit more? No way. Waking up and crashing this late sucks. Aurora stretched her arms overhead. Ugh. Just to handle emergencies, I got this dress with pockets for spell components and useful stuff. I didn't even dare roll over, scared I might stab myself. I slept like a board. As she spoke, she hopped off the bed and strode to the window. She yanked back the curtains and peered outside. Cordu was silent. Many houses were still lit up. I thought that owl would come after us for sure, but there's no sign of it out there. Aurora surveyed the area and explained to Lumian. Lumian nodded. That was my guess too. He then leaned in and whispered everything he had figured out to his sister. Not bad. Aurora said with a smile. You're getting better at analyzing situations. I've got nothing to add. She paused. But we can't take matters into our own hands. That tomb is too dangerous. At this point, she exclaimed. At dawn, we'll pay Madame Poilice a visit and tell her your theory. Let her know the warlocks and owl's motives might affect her escape from this time loop at that precise time. I'll go myself, Lumian said. He didn't want Aurore anywhere near Madame Poilice, who had designs on her. Aurore didn't argue. She only reminded him. Watch your back. Don't piss her off or else... She eyed his abdomen meaningfully. Aurore sighed and said, Truth is, that mysterious lady at Old Tavern is clearly stronger, but she wants nothing to do with this time loop. No way she'll help us investigate that tomb. Yeah, Lumian agreed. He then said, Still, I'll stop by Old Tavern tomorrow to see if I can run into her. What if she changes her mind? Fair enough, Aurora didn't object. They chatted in hushed tones until midnight. After Lumion relieved his post with Leia in the study, he returned to Aurora's room. He lay beside his sister, inhaling her familiar scent and sinking into the soft mattress. Sleep eluded him. What's wrong? Aurora asked, noticing his tenseness. Just not used to this, Lumion said carefully. Aurora scoffed. What happened to the bold Lumion I know? Lumion didn't reply. Aurora exhaled slowly and smiled. Remember when you first started tailing me? You were scared I'd slip away and refuse to sleep at night. You were super vigilant. Yeah, I do. Lumion drifted into the past. Back then, you'd hum me a lullaby and let me doze off to the sound of your voice. As soon as the words left his lips, a familiar melody reached his ears. 
light and soothing. It calmed his body and mind. Leaning against the bed, Aurora gazed into the deep crimson dark before her. She hummed a lullaby from her hometown, soft and wistful. It was a song her mother had crooned when Aurora was just a kid, coaxing her to sleep. Go to sleep, go to sleep. Lost in the gentle tune, Lumion gradually unwound and slipped under. Lumion woke up amidst the faint gray fog. He scoped the room and realized that he wasn't in his sister's room. He was still in his own room.